while surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. Jordan River. What do you say we sit down here and rest while we enjoy the view? It flows through the length of Israel to the Dead Sea. Hey, you guys, if we're going to travel through Israel, I wish we could hitch a boat ride on this river instead of walking all the way. Hey, that's a good idea. There's some fishermen down there. I'll ask if one of them is sailing down river and might take us. Uh, let's skip the Dead Sea part, okay? Uh, my friends and I were wondering if you might be sailing down river and could let us sail with you. No, young man, I'm not sailing down river, but if you can use this old boat, you're welcome to it. <laughs> I was going to chop it up for firewood. Hey, that's wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Come on, guys. We own a boat. That's great. Let's go. He gave you that piece of junk, <laughs> and you took it? Hey, you're the kid that wanted a boat ride. Yes, Moki, be thankful for the man's generosity. I'm sorry. Margo, why don't you stay with the boat while Moki and I go to the village and hunt for food for our trip? Moki, you go that way, and I'll go this. We'll meet back here in an hour. You got it. only able to get some fruit and a loaf of bread. Well, that's better than nothing. Maybe Moki will be luckier. He's a real scrounger. Hey, well, easy there. I won't watch it. Oh, I need that here. Oh, oh, oh. Does this little heathen belong to you? Uh, yes, he's with us. What's wrong? What did he do? He came into my inn, ate five fish dinners, drank three tankards of goat's milk, and did not pay. He said he had a ship to catch and had no time to work off the bill. He said the ship's captain would see I was paid from cargo aboard the ship. Are you the captain of the ship? Uh, I guess so. Where's your ship? Oh, and where's your cargo? Well, I see I shall have a young servant to clean up my inn for quite a while, or go to debtor's prison. <laughs> Moki, sometimes you are a real Jonah. He's a Jonah? You can say that again. Well, this makes a difference. His relative is an important man. Come, we will ask him to settle the bill. Well, we're not going sailing. So let's go see who the innkeeper thinks Moki is related to. I'm a Moki! Why did Derek call me a Jonah? I think it's an old saying sailors use to describe someone who brings bad luck on board a ship. Oh, I get it now. Ah! 
Samson, what is it? Ah, Micah, welcome. What brings you here, and who are your friends? Oh, they're travelers. But this one owes me money for five fish dinners. And unless someone pays me for the food he ate, he shall go to debtor's prison. But he bears your name. Surely a prophet would not let his kin go to prison. What is your name, son? Uh, Moki, and this is Margo and Derek. His friends call him Jonah, and he owes me ten shekels. Ten shekels? Oh, <laughs> my. You must have had a banquet. Here, Micah, and thank you for bringing my, uh, my uh, relative here. Young man, anyone who can talk Micah into giving them something for nothing deserves a reward. <laughs> it will soon be nightfall. Why don't you all stay the night in my home? My housekeeper will prepare supper for you and food for your journey tomorrow. Oh, thank you. That's great. I could use a good night's sleep. Supper sounds wonderful. Uh, I'm not very hungry. Uh, Martha, these are my guests. Prepare some food and places for them to sleep. Yes, sir. hopes you slept well. I have prepared your morning meal, and here is food to take with you on your journey. Please thank our host for us. Is he still sleeping? Oh, no. The prophet was up at dawn. He is in the garden where he is writing his great experiences for the sacred records of our people. Derek, how dumb can we be? Don't you see who our host is? Huh? He's the prophet Jonah. You mean the Bible prophet Jonah? The, the one who... Right. That's why when you called Moki a Jonah, the innkeeper thought Moki was his relative. I'm a Moki, not a Jonah. What he's writing is what got put into the Bible. You know, the book of Jonah. He wrote the book? He's famous, huh? Real famous. Hey, maybe we are related. We can't tell him that we know his story, but wouldn't it be wonderful to hear it from him personally? Yeah, let's ask. Good morning. Are you on your way? Yeah, and thanks for your hospitality. And for the bed and breakfast, too. Uh, your housekeeper told us that you're writing your great experience for the sacred records. We'd love to hear them before we go. Would you tell us? Well, there are things in my story that I'm not too proud of. But I have learned much since then. Sit down, and I will tell you. Several years ago, as a young man, I was sleeping when God spoke to me. Jonah. Jonah. Arise, Jonah. Go to Nineveh, that great city. Preach to the people. Their wickedness has come up to me. Warn them to turn from their sins. As God spoke, I saw the wickedness of the city. I did not want to go to Nineveh. The Ninevites worship idols. They do not know the true God. They are enemies of Israel. They will not listen. 
I'll not go to Nineveh. I shall go to Joppa on the Great Sea and take a ship in the opposite direction. Then maybe I can get far enough away from God that he will not remind me to go preach to the wicked Ninevites. of this ship? I am. I would like to pay passage to Tarshish. Well, you are in luck. We are sailing to Tarshish within the hour when the cargo is loaded. You may go aboard now. He looks as though he's running away from someone. Probably his wife. <laughs> <laughs> You see, my young friends, I was running away from God, and I thought by going deep into the hold of the ship and going to sleep, that I could hide from him. Smokey, but not quite. You see, Moki, there was air in the whale's belly and Jonah could breathe. 
Yes, Derek, I could breathe, but it wasn't a whale. It was a great fish God created for this purpose. Nothing is impossible for God. He created everything. How did you get out? I'm coming to that, Moki. I was inside the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights. I prayed to God and I asked for his forgiveness and said, if I were delivered from the fish's belly, I would do as he commanded. My God, have mercy on me that I might be delivered from the depths, and I vow that I will do what you have commanded of me. I began walking the long journey to Nineveh. with the affairs of state. Well, what is it? <clears throat> Majesty, we felt you should know that there is a man going about the city preaching repentance. He says we've sinned against his God. And because of this, our great city will be destroyed within 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet! Who is this man? Jonah is his name, Your Majesty. He is called a prophet. The Hebrew prophet Jonah? The Israelite King Jeroboam has believed this man's words. We must do as he says, lest his God destroy us for our sins. It is my decree that all in Nineveh shall put on sackcloth and ashes and fast for a period neither eating or drinking, and cease all wickedness and violence.
I left the city to wait and see its destruction by fire and brimstone. Oh, boy. I'll bet that was an awful sight. No, Moki, it didn't happen. I was angry with God. I had prophesied Nineveh's destruction. They were enemies of Israel, and God spared them. As I sat above the city in my anger, with the sun beating upon me and the hot wind of the desert blowing upon me, a vine of wild gourds sprang up, shading and cooling me. I was happy with this gift from God and felt that he was sorry and had done this to appease my anger. But in the night, worms came and ate the vine. Again, the hot sun and desert wind beat upon me, and again I was angry and even wished I could die. And then God spoke to me. Jonah, were you angry to see the gourd vine die? Yes, angry enough to die. You had pity for the vine that you neither planted or caused to grow, that it came up in a night and then perished in a night. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city of 120,000 people, who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and much cattle? It was then I learned a great lesson. God loves all his children. Our enemies may not be his enemies, and when any of his children repent, he blesses them. Well, my friends, <laughs> That is my story. Now, I guess you are continuing your journey? Yeah, I think we'll have to get moving. That's a wonderful story, Jonah. Yes, and a real lesson. Thanks for everything. Come on, guys, time to travel. Goodbye. Oh, and I don't mind being called Jonah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Jonas, little dog, ate all our food. Oh, Samson, go home. Well, looks like we'll have to go hunt for food for our journey again. Hey, I know where we can get free fish dinners. Moki? <laughs> Just kidding, Derek. Just kidding. Come back here, you little scrounge. Oh, boys will be boys.